I get so caught up in the middle, thinking of drowning in this blue eye. Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning Channel. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to be here with you getting into my weekly check-in. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am excited to have you here. Um, I'm excited to share what my weekly check-in looks like this week. It's going to be a little bit of a craziness, but I will explain everything as I go through. I am a credit card spender, but I pay my credit card off every week. I've been doing this since for four years now, and I have yet to pay interest payments. By keeping it organized and knowing what I spend and budgeting the cash out for every for the entire month actually, um, at the beginning of the month, knowing how much income comes in and knowing how much I can spend in cash from the checking account to pay off my credit card every week. So my checking account holds the cash um, week to week as the uh, transactions happen, but I only pay the credit card once a week. I do this because it makes sense to me. I do this because um, I like having a, a place where I can hold it and it's in a holding pattern until I pay it. Um, I don't recommend it for everybody and I actually had to train myself how to use a credit card um, responsibly by practicing with using my debit card. My debit card I knew was exact cash and I knew I couldn't get over go over in it and I didn't want non-sufficient fund fees. I did not want anything, any checks to bounce or anything like that. So I trained myself to have that panic or fear moment inside when you're swiping your card uh, at the register. If you have that fear of it could decline if I go too far and you don't pay attention to how much is actually in there, then um, you're just going to keep swiping and swiping and swiping without thinking. Um, I wanted to think and be able to swipe. So it took me, I would say, four years. I may have been using my credit card for four years and paying it off, no interest. But four years before that, um, I was using a debit card, training my mind, um, training my brain to understand that panic response if I didn't have enough money in the checking account and, and really honing in on my budget. So if you're new to the budgeting world and you want to use a credit card, but you cannot seem to pay it off and you cannot seem to have a zero balance, I would stop using a credit card immediately. I would focus on paying that to zero and I would use my debit card cash only one of the two um, and retrain how it makes you feel when you swipe the card. That way you can stay in control of your money and not lose track of everything and write everything down. The only way I can do this is to write it down. So that's what I've done here and that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to do the weekly check-in. It's going to be very different because I did travel and making decisions on where money was coming from was a little murky, but I will walk you through it and the decisions I made for my six categories and we'll go from there. So here we go. Okay, I am back. So the weekly check-in. I have a budget for each week in the month of May and this month I started the month thinking I was going to do a four-week month, but then I changed my mind to a five-week. I would check in every Thursday, upload the video on Friday, and do my weekly check-ins that way. The month of May, I have changed my mind. <laughs> I have decided to um, check in every seven days. So that because my husband gets paid on the first and he only has two paycheck periods a month, um, we're gonna do the first seven days. So that left one, two, three, four, and still three days left. So this is gonna be week five. Um, I am not budgeting an amount for week five. I'm only a budgeting for um, the first four weeks and whatever's left over will cover um, this 29th through the 31st. So that's how my budget's gonna go this month. Um, I thought about putting this into the next month, but then I thought, no, I better just close it out and it'll be fine. As you can see, we have a lot of transactions to go through. Um, but I did keep whatever I had planned for my weeklies uh, for the first four weeks of the month, um, which total exactly how much I put away from the deposits that came on the first of the month. Which for this month, all my spending categories uh, uh, 
totaled $2,500. So that is what I have for my spending categories. Now, my spending categories, I have six listed, but only five of them are included here in my $2,500. I divide it by four weeks. That's how I know how much per week. Um, everything unbudgeted comes out of the buffer of the checking account. Now, I know if you saw my previous videos, I said $77 would be my um, monthly uh, buffer. What I didn't include, and I do this pretty often, is I don't include the previous month's income into the new month. So this was what was left at the end of April, and I brought it over to May. Some of this is tax return money. Some of this is other money that came in. I came and think, or transfer from um, what I had left out of paying for our siding, stuff like that. Um, no, actually, no, I put that in savings, so I don't remember. Anyways, I'm still brain fried from travel and stuff. But whatever was left over at the end of April, I brought it over to May just because I still need a larger cushion while lots of things are happening. Um, with me traveling out of town, I'm pretty sure I'll go out of town again, either the end of this month or the beginning of next month. I really hope I'm home for my son's birthday, which is June 9th, but we will have to wait and see, or I can make it, um, June 9th. I don't know. We'll see. My parents are selling their home and they need a little extra help. So I've been doing that. So anything I did unbudgeted will be coming out of this number here. Um, the rest of it will be coming out of this spending that I set aside from my husband's paychecks to cover the entire month. So we have all the cash we need at the beginning of the month to take care of all this and uh, we just move forward from there. All right, now to get into the nitty gritty of stuff. So as you see here, um, I have a bunch of unbudgeted, mainly because it was easier for me to run out and get things while I was at my parents' house with my card, and then they can pay me back later. They're very good at that. I have some of it in cash already. I just didn't, I should have deposited in the bank while I was in North Carolina because they do have my bank there, but I just didn't make time to do it. Um, we were just so, so busy. So the first seven days are what we're looking at. We had two no spend days, but we had days where my husband was taking care of things here at home and I was spending in North Carolina, put them into categories. We're going to be over budget for the entire month. Um, we're fine. We're just going to roll with it. I'm not going to worry about it because we have enough of a buffer in the checking account to, to absorb what's left over. When I did these numbers, I reduced a lot of this in order to fit it in and have a little bit of money left over at the end of the month. That's $77 I showed you a minute ago. But um, I know I'm going to be over this $2,500 because of the travel, because of all the things. It's fine. Um, I'm planning on that. I just don't know what it looks like, so I'm allowing myself to go over. If I wasn't doing all this traveling or anything like that, I would work harder to stay uh, within these numbers. And I do recommend people to um, stay within the budget that they have for themselves. Because every time you say, oh, it's okay, I don't, I, you know, it was worth it to me, or it was okay, I, I, I don't mind that I went over or whatever. You're giving yourself permission for the future and you're training your brain to not look as closely at what is going on and the behavior behind the spending. Now, for me, I know the behavior behind the spending is because of travel, um, convenience, and family. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice for those things. Now, if I am emotionally spending because I've had a bad day or if I'm spending because I am in a great mood and I saw something really cool and I just frivolously bought something, things like that, when those things happen in your spending, those are the ones you want to kind of push back and go, is this a need or a want and can I really afford it? Um, or will this hinder me for something else in the future that I actually need? So those are the things you have to think about when you're budgeting. Okay, so I have my little sheet here. Normally I have a long sheet, but this month I had so many transactions I decided to do almost a full page here. Um, if you're curious, this is an Erin Condren 7x9 
um, monthly planner for this year in the wildflower design. I think they're coming out with their new designs or they have already come out with their new designs. I am not buying planner supplies this year. I'm using up what I have, so I'm taking a year off. And so far, it's been working well. I also enjoy purchasing their notebooks. I'm going through all the notebooks that or notepads that I have bought and finishing those up before I buy any new ones as well. So now I'm down to my wider notebook uh, pads and that's fine. So let's start with grocery household. The first thing I have here, I kind of have them a little out of order, is this $12.21 um, Amazon. Um, anything that you can buy in a grocery store, supplements, allergy medicine, food, um, perishable items, non-perishable items, milk, dairy items, whatever. If it's considered groceries, even pet food sometimes, if you want to include that in your category or separate it out so you know how much you're spending on pet food. But if you're buying it in a grocery store, a regular grocery store, not a, not clothes, automotive, and all that stuff, just a regular grocery store, um, I, I give myself grocery household category all in one because I don't like to go to many stores. I don't like to go over here for toiletry items and over here for this item. I don't shop that way. I buy it in one place and that's it. So I, and I don't like dividing up receipts. And some of my items actually come from Amazon. And I, I was out of town. My husband called and said, um, my youngest son is having allergy problems. And this time of year, sometimes we switch from Claritin to Zyrtec. And that helps with um, slowing, um, helps him, his body. Because sometimes we get so used to taking a allergy medicine, it becomes ineffective. So if you switch it up for a few weeks uh, with a different brand, um, a different type of medicine, it helps kick back in a little bit better. And then you can get through the season a little bit easier. And that seems to work for my son. He's still a little nasally, but he's not as bad as he was. So I have this Amazon um, purchase allergy, and this is so because my husband was the only one here. I do have two adult sons with autism. They do not drive. Uh, so I was like, I will just order it on Amazon. It'll come to the house. You don't have to stop at the store on the way home. The hardest part for my husband to stop at the store on the way home is actually um, he drives a, a state vehicle because he works for the state and it's on a GPS system and that GPS tells the state where he stops. And so he has to be careful with that. Um, they may come back and ask. I'm sure it wouldn't have been a problem if he stopped at the grocery store, but they were like, he was like, I, I'm so tired when I come home because many days he drives two hours one way and two hours back to do what he do, needs to do for his job. And so I was like, I'll just ship it. It'll be fine. You don't even have to think about it. <laughs> So there was that. Now I did go to Walmart um, and this was in Raleigh, North Carolina where my parents live. 53.68 was that and it was a combination of my parents groceries and food I wanted while I was there. So I was like I'll just pay for it. It's not a problem because they took me out to eat. They took you know they paid for things for me so it kind of evens itself out uh, in the end but I'm not that worried about it. So here um, and that was on the second. On the third um, my husband stopped at the grocery store and got milk and some uh, biscuits and stuff to fix this for the weekend and you know Pillsbury uh, flaky layers biscuits that's what my sons like so much and they go through at least six or seven gallons of milk a week so uh, they're they like their milk that's all I'm gonna say about that <laughs> um, so this 2432 and I think this 2967 is my husband's um, he stopped at the party store and picked up uh, something to drink for himself, and that's fine. I always include it under groceries. Um, he doesn't need a separate category. I don't typically buy that stuff for him. Um, so I was just like, you go pick it up. It's fine. Uh, Walmart, $70.21. Uh, a lot of this was my parents' stuff, but uh, again, it was a mixture of mine and my parents'. Uh, food and necessity items. I think I bought some like lotions and because I forgot to bring mine and just other necessity items um, that everybody needed. So $70.21. Um, and I think I bought some stuff for the house, uh, my parents' house and stuff. Oh, packing paper. No, that's separate. Is that separate? Is that in here? That's not. 
yes it is in here but it's not under groceries okay so the next thing I have here is I think the $70 actually included packing paper and I think that was like $12, $13 um, cause we were packing boxes and stuff like that. Regardless, it doesn't matter. It's there. Uh, Myers for $5.44. I think that was two gallons of milk. My husband picked up cause they needed more milk. Okay. This blank is for Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. I'm filming this. It hopefully will go up tonight on the 8th, like I promised. But, um, yesterday my husband had to buy milk. I am doing a huge grocery pickup here in a few hours. So that's what that is for when I go pick that up. So that's grocery household. Let's total up what we have for grocery household. And uh, see how much that cost. Okay, so $195.53 is what we spent um, for grocery household. Let me write that number down here. One, nine, five, five, three. Okay, so that is that. Now we're gonna move on to restaurants. There's gonna be my eating out as I was traveling or I just wanted to get out of the house away from my, it's been years since I lived with my parents <laughs> I was 21 years old and I'm almost 50 and that's the last time I lived with my parents so spending an entire week and a half with them and working on projects like that sometimes was a little heavy and um I needed to get out of the house so I would maybe get breakfast or something for myself and um yeah so there's a lot of eating out and we're just gonna let it roll and whatever we spend over by the end of the month outside of what we budgeted uh, will come out of the buffer to checking account. I could have put some of this under like unbudgeted, but um, to be honest, I really wanted to see how much we spent to in total for the month for eating out. So that's what we're doing here. First thing I have here, um, Tuesday the 29th, not 29th, what was the last day of April? 30th. Uh, did I not close? I haven't closed out April, so I'll be doing that. So on the 30th, I could count this for last month, but I'm not going to. I've already got it here. But on the 30th, um, my husband picked up uh, Chick fil A for the family for dinner here at home. And then um, on Thursday, move this over a little bit uh hall's vending my husband picked up a sandwich for lunch where he worked and they have like um a deli counter or a grill or something inside the office building he works because there's no restaurants nearby so they have a contract and it's um, when he charges it it says hall's vending uh chick-fil-a again there's gonna be a lot of chick-fil-a's and a mcdonald's um i on the nights I typically cook chicken for the family. My husband didn't have time or was too tired and he's not used to cooking chicken. Um, and he was always afraid of burning it. Basically, uh, he would just grab Chick-fil-A or McDonald's on the way home. So another 32.18 here. And then let's see. Now this is a no spend day on the fourth. So a lot happened on the third. And there's little arrows here that tell you this is part of the third, not a problem. So I had $7.89. I went and got uh, a breakfast meal at Chick-fil-A to get out of the house a little bit. And then um, my husband ordered pizza on Friday. And that was $58.39. Um, now that's a miscellaneous. I don't have the right sticker colors. Uh, I need to print and cut more of those. So the next thing I have is over here. Did I check everything off? Chick-fil-A, Papa John's. Okay, here we go. So over here I have um, 
3209 that was McDonald's for my husband and my sons together and then here on Tuesday this is me driving home my I got breakfast for 1286 um, then I got lunch for 982 Chick-fil-A and McDonald's it was just easy to pull in and do that before I got on the road and then after I got on the road and then my husband um, got Burger King for himself. He actually attempted and tried um, cooking ch chicken for my sons and it, he did it successfully. <laughs> he took his time. He worked from home that day so he didn't have to rush home. These other days he was rushing home from a job site that was two hours away and late in the evening so obviously he wasn't feeling like cooking but this one day he was home from work and he did cook. So that was awesome i appreciated that from him um so that is the rest of the uh restaurants for this week I'm trying to get in the swing of things as far as filming again and being on camera and it's a little awkward after not doing it for a week and a half you wouldn't think so but it is so i'm going to total this up and i'll be right back All right, so total in restaurants we spent was 200 and two dollars and 85 cents. There we go. A lot of money was already spent, double what I planned or budgeted for the week. But again, I know I'm going over and I know the reason why I'm going over. Sometimes when you have a reason why, you don't know um, how to plan for it. Uh, easily and that is why I did this because you want to plan for it but you just don't know what it's going to cost exactly and sometimes it paralyzes you into budgeting for that uh, at least it does for me so I just kind of let things roll as long as I know I have the cash uh, I let things roll and I try to carefully think things through as they are happening uh, many people prefer to plan for it and plan like a specific number and that's fine if that what works for you but that's not typically how I budget but either way is right there is no wrong way to budget you can budget and it look different from somebody else's sometimes it's good if you don't know how to budget to imitate someone else's process but as you're doing it tweaking it to make sense for you that's the best that's exactly what I did when I first started this in 2019 and I was really serious about budgeting that is how I ran my budget is I did it the way somebody else did it on YouTube that I really liked. And then I'm like, once I realized, well, that's not working for me. Let me try this and started creating my own habits in budgeting. It made all the difference in the world. So don't give up. Don't worry if it's not perfect. You will discover what works best for you and be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself when you are doing this process. Um, everything is recoverable. Everything, I mean, yes, you could have gained more or saved more in one time period or another, but I'm sorry. I think God is too good to leave you hanging in the wind and um, not being able to take care of yourself. He makes promises. He promises he will protect and he will provide even if we screw up. So he is always faithful and that is kind of my faith behind my budgeting. Um, I try to make the best decisions possible, but he's the one that's always faithful. I'm not always. So I totally um, understand the pressure of that, but don't worry about it. He, he's going to love us regardless. So here we go. Next category is miscellaneous. I'm so proud that we are not using this for frivolous fun stuff as we used to, um, especially for me and stickers and stuff. Um, we have done really good this year to keep it at a minimum. Uh, I'm trying to remember what we bought. <laughs> Let's see if I wrote it down. Oh, okay. This first one here um, is a 33.32 and it's a purchase my husband made and I'm not sure what it is. It's either automotive related or hunting or fishing related. I have no idea. But I know he made the purchase, so I just wrote down the title that they had when he um, swiped the card. 
and SP junk is what it said. So I'm like, okay, I hope this is a good website. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it, but okay. And so I, I did that. He, I mean, he did that. And then the next one we have is bluegrass hardware. Um, eleven dollars and sixty-five cents. Again, I don't. I, he told me, but I don't remember what it was. But he bought something from a hardware store that he needed, and I'm like, okay. And then that was the charge for that. I just put it under miscellaneous because it's not something we would regularly purchase. Um, it's just like a one-off kind of thing. So I put it there. And then SP Love Cards. I don't know where he's shopping online. This is my Mother's Day gift. I know how much it is, but I have no idea what it is. So uh, that worked out pretty well. And I appreciate him actually remembering <laughs> to <laughs> do something for Mother's Day. Because I do not like to go out to eat or um, be out and about on Mother's Day because of all the crowds and stuff. I just, I prefer to do it like the week before, the week after, or something like that if we're going to go out to eat and have a special dinner or a special night. Um, we'll probably do a DoorDash or something, <laughs> have something delivered. But uh, yeah, I do not go out on Mother's Day, except for church. We go to church and that's fine. Here we go. I'm going to total this up. Okay, so that was $70.41 for what we spent there. Now, I could create a whole bunch of categories like um, Mother's Day, you know, uh, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, and all of those things. For us and our family, for many years, we couldn't afford to spend money on those holidays. So we're not one used to spending money on those holidays. But at the same time, when we do, we just take it out of the budget of the month that's happening and make it work. Um, Moving on, let's go to the gasoline category. Um, I purchased, I put them backwards. <laughs> Hold on a second. I use removable adhesive stickers. So I'm just gonna pull this one up and I'm gonna put this one over there. Um, cause I actually bought this in Raleigh, not on my way home. So I stepped up, stopped at Exxon. It took, um, a f it takes about a full tank of gas to get to where I need to go. So, and I think, did I hold on? Okay. So. Okay, so the gas I spent to get to Raleigh fell in April because I left in April. Um, and so I put that in April's budget. And then once I, and I got gas twice, they were over $30 each. So it takes about a tank of gas to get to where I'm going from Kentucky to Raleigh, North Carolina. And then once I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, I was not using my vehicle very much. And I still had a quarter tank of gas. And... Um, it, until um, I had to start delivering uh, boxes from my parents' house to the storage unit that we that my dad rented. So I stopped and got gas on the second and filled up my tank um, at Exxon. And that was 67.83. And then this Fast Mart was like a Valero gas station in Bristol, Tennessee. So I had this fill up and then I didn't drive my vehicle, but maybe once or twice that after that point. And then I left directly from my parents' house. So I, I had a full tank of gas, so I didn't top it off or anything. And I just drove till I got to Bristol, Tennessee um, and filled up a gas again when I got lunch. And that was 66.87 at a Valero gas station. So I did include the trip gas in this budget, mainly because I know um, if I'm over in gas for the month, it's just coming out of the buffer, the checking account. So 67.83 plus the 66.87, and I have 134.70. There we go. 
and yeah you don't see a lot of gas transactions um, you never see any from my husband unless he drives his Jeep on the weekends and he doesn't have to fill his Jeep up very often because he has a work vehicle and the state pays for the gas for that vehicle so we're good to go there unbudgeted all right unbudgeted were items I purchased uh, for the staging of my parents home um, we decluttered we boxed up everything that was personal to them and then we um, put those boxes into storage we rented my dad rented a 5 by 10 storage unit and it was floor to ceiling <laughs> full and uh, yeah that that was um, that was a lot of work so uh, first thing was this um, Lowe's or no target I want to go do target so it's 186.50 I spent a pretty penny on um, I went to the section that Joanna Gaines kind of farmhouse um, home decor stuff in Target and I bought the fake plants basically they were ivy but they had this great pot um, that was really nice and my mom has open areas above our cabinets in the kitchen and the the what she had up there we took down and we wanted to put something kind of neutral. My parents' house was covered in lighthouses and cardinals. <laughs> and that's not everybody's motif. So we wanted to neutralize a lot of this. So I went to Target and got six or seven of these plants. And um, what else did I get at Target? Some stuff for me that I wanted. I bought a, pack, a $70, $75 pack of picture frames that um, were botanical and they were Eight, um, not an 8 by 10 but 11 by 14 size um, and they're gorgeous I thought that I just loved them and the reason I bought them was I told my mom uh, I would take these after they were done and add them to my house but for right now we're using them at her house to stage the house um, so that she um, they can sell the house quickly uh, so I bought a lot of stuff a total a 186.50 and yeah I mean there's just a lot of plants and um, home decor stuff that I bought so the next thing I have is a 67.52 the first time I went to Lowe's uh, my mom spent the money on the paint uh, she had a bathroom that needed painting and so I painted her bathroom for her and the paint color was wrong so we took it back to Lowe's they refunded our money and then um, because when I went back to get the money uh, to return the paint color that was wrong and too dark for the bathroom we were painting I didn't have my mom with me and her card to buy the right color so I just went ahead and bought it I'm probably going to total a lot of this up later and if my dad wants to pay me back that's fine if not I don't really care <laughs> um, I'll just say it's a gift for them um, I did not mind one way or the other I love taking care of my family and anytime I choose to spend money one I'm in agreement with my husband when we do this and two um, when we're in agreement we understand and our philosophy is if you're going to give someone money don't worry about getting it back just don't um, give it as a gift and if they pay you back great but if they don't don't worry about it just let it go and that's how if we give money that's how we do it so that's how our our heart alignment is with God is it's a gift when we give that is something he's laid on our heart for many years and we're okay with that so I bought some paints and some paint supplies and things like that. That's what the 6752 were for. And then here at Walmart, 2545, that was two packets of packages of um I keep wanting to say parchment paper, but it's packing paper. <laughs> Tongue twister. Um two more packets of packing paper for the boxes um, that we were packaging. So over here, scoot this over a little bit, we have unbudgeted $80.41 at Lowe's, or Lowe's Target. Again, more home decor stuff, um, 
just simple things to kind of put around the house, um, kind of make the bathroom feel like a spa feel a little bit, and um, just some small random things. I would have to look at the receipt again to find out. Uh, $5.35. So my mom sent me to Salvation Army where she typically drops off her um, donations. And while I was there, I went inside and saw these really pretty white plates. And um, I'll probably keep these if she doesn't want them. <laughs> and they're just plain white plates, but they kind of had a you can use them as a regular plate, but it had enough of a bowl or um, a dip in it that you could use it for like a soup dish or a salad, things like that. So I really liked them and, and really wanted them. So I got a set of six and my mom had this long uh, wooden display uh, going across her kitchen that you could prop up plates, uh, decorative plates on top. And she had a bunch of lighthouse stuff up there. And we took all that down except for one lighthouse plate. And then the rest of it, we put the rest of the plate, white plates up there. And it looked really neat. So it turned out really, really pretty. And um, I just love how the house turned out after we did all this. Uh, Lowe's again, $34.58. Honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sure cleaning supplies and other things and stuffs that for the staging of the house. So that's, I went back to Lowe's and did that. I actually have a couple items I want to take back. I'm hoping I could take back to my Lowe's here, even though I bought it down there that we didn't need, but we'll see. Now, not on here, you will see um, that I still have like this one penny uh, unbudgeted item, but it's not up here. I don't know what I did to be a penny off, but in order to make it right on what I needed to pay back the credit card, I needed an adjustment of one penny. So that's what that is. And that'll be included with what I pay back the credit card. All right, um, I had zero copays, no um, prescriptions or anything like that needed to come out. Okay, so the last thing we have is the bills. Now, the bills I will do in just a minute because this is the weekly check-in on the spending part first, and I want to get that taken care of, and then after that, we'll look at the bills and see what came out for the month and uh, what that got put on the credit card. So we're talking the first seven days of the month, and these will be the same bills that we have on the first seven days of every month. So they're pretty typical. So let's go ahead and go back to the weekly check-in over here. Now that I've gone over all the transactions for the week uh, for the first seven days. All right, let's get this kind of set up. I'm trying to figure out, oh, this way I think would be better. Okay, so I know I spent for grocery household $1.95.53. And then I'll do the balance and the balance forward to the next week um, in a minute. I just want to get these numbers down. Uh, restaurants, we spent $202.85. Uh, miscellaneous, we spent $70.41. Um, gas, we spent $134.70. Zero for copay. And then unbudgeted is, did I write the number down? Oh my gosh, you guys are probably yelling at me. <laughs> Lisa, you didn't total it up. Okay, so let's total up right now. Okay, so we have $399.82. Again, my parents may give me money back for that. I don't mind one way or the other. We will work with that later. And if I make a deposit, then it will just go back to the buffer of the checking account. Not a problem. So let me write this number down, 399.82. And now we're gonna work on the balances. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second. So what I do here is I take the budgeted amount, the 350, and I subtract the 195.53, and that gives me a balance of what's left over. If you were doing a cash envelope, 
this would probably look like uh, $154 cash in your envelope. Your change would have been put aside and that's what you would reduce what's left in your envelope. And you either use the cash left over in savings challenges or you might have a specific savings that you're actually taking that money for or you roll it over to the next week. I just move it forward to the next week and uh, it keeps it keeps um, the amount that I plan for the entire month. It covers what I need as I go forward through the month. So I have left over $154.47. I am going to add to that another $350 because the first four weeks of the month, I'm adding $350. And that gives me a total budget of $504.47. Now I can tell you today, the grocery pickup I'm doing, I'm buying multiple items. Um, there was a buy three, get one free um, with something that was seven, eight dollars. So a lot of it's like bathroom supplies, mouthwash, shampoos, uh, deodorants, things like that. Um, I was stocking up on a lot of that. So the this week two coming up, um, the groceries I bought today were over $300. Again, I was gone a week and a half. So I wasn't home to order the groceries I normally get by the week. Um, I usually get just under $200 worth of groceries every week, $100 to $200. And so because of that, I was planning a little catch up and then buying what was on sale. Um, having all the money uh, for what I need in my spending categories at the beginning of the month allows me to have flexibility to buy um, bulk, buy more in bulk when it's on sale. Um, but I try not to keep too much in the house. So that's, that's how I operate when I do um, my spending categories. And only in grocery household do I do that. I do not do that for clothes. I do not do that for, I buy those as I need them. Um, and the rest of the categories, they're just spending. So um, only in groceries do I look for those deals and those sales and buy in bulk uh, from time to time. So this is definitely enough for um, what I'm spending in week two and I should have some left over. Um, I think I, I stocked up enough for um, the rest of this week, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, the next thing we have is restaurants. Obviously I was over, when I'm over, I use a red pen. So I have $100 and I subtracted $202.85. That gives me a negative 102.85. And that was for my eating out and my family's eating out while I was gone. It was a necessity. Um, I did keep the category low, $400 for the month. So I know by the end of the month we'll be over budget. But when I set this budget up, I did not have the balance forward from April's money into May. And now that I do have that money sitting there, um, I know our eating out, even though it would be high, will be safe for the month. As long as I keep tracking it and keeping my eye on it, um, I know I can stay within uh, that amount of money. So because I have a negative, I'm going to add $100, which is what I do every week for for four weeks this month um, for restaurants. And that leaves me a negative uh, $2.85 left. So any spent happening in the weekly check-in next week, uh, when I come back on the 14th, that uh, amount will be negative here. So we'll have to, we might go negative all month. I may decide to add more to this budget and so I won't have so much negative. I may not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So we'll see. Uh, miscellaneous. We have $100 planned. I spent, my husband and I spent $70.41 and we still had $29.59. All right. We're going to add $100 and that's $100 and $29.59. All right, gasoline, I have $50. Now I am gonna be negative here, but it's going to be fine because as I go through the month, it'll go from negative to, to positive because all the cash is sitting in there. I'm just borrowing for future weeks. Um, I just happened to 
I always like to divide the number per week and um, this is special circumstances because of the travel and that's okay. So $50 minus 134 70 and so we're over budget by $84 and 70 cents and I'm going to add gasoline another $50 for week two oops and we're still negative $34 but I probably won't be spending a lot of gas for at least two weeks I won't get another fill up for I think for two weeks so we have $34.70. So when I get to week three, that copay $50 um, budgeted amount for gasoline will put that in a positive, and by the end of the month, it'll be fine. I don't think I'm going back to Raleigh anytime soon, so that's fine. Uh, $25 because I didn't spend anything in copay, so now plus another $25 makes that $50. There we go. And then unbudgeted. So unbudgeted is always zero. And if I spend anything, it's always negative. So that's $399.82. And that I'll pay out of the buffer of the checking account. And keep an eye uh, on my checking account to make sure all the bills can be paid as well as the spending. And as long as that is possible, then we're good. So that is my weekly check-in, but I still gotta figure out how much we spent on the credit card. So I'm gonna take this, kind of move this over here a little. My paper was stuck, there we go. And now I'm gonna take those totals and we're gonna total up the bills. So I'll show you in my bill calendar. I have two calendars. Um, one is a bill calendar, which is the monthly calendar that comes with the planner. And then the second one I have here, which um, is a sticker page. So I buy Planner Kate um, ca uh, calendars, sticker pages. So you got plannerkate.com. This is where I keep it in the envelope it came in. And if you're looking for someone that sells this stuff, um, let me get the gloss off. There we go. I print this. Uh, I have my own. They're not perfect, but I do print my own stickers. And then these kind of go like this. And it's just a full sticker page. And you can see uh, the code for that is MNTH200A and B. They come together. One's the left side, one's the right side. And a uh, Planner Kate full page sticker page. So I put my own header and then I put hers here. And then I always like to have a little color down here at the bottom. This is a pattern I've had for years, which I absolutely love. And it came with this little design here of this little girl. And I just thought that was so cute. So I print and cut that. I'm not great at printing and cutting stickers, but, um, and lining things up, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I don't plan to do a sticker shop. I just do it for myself. So I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and go back to the bill page, um, which also have Planner Kate stickers. This was the color palette for May. And I've checked off everything that has come out, um, bill wise. And you know what? I used to do this and I'm forgetting to highlight. So we're going to do that right now. It's my blue highlighter okay. and the bills that came out that were on the credit card. So we have a tithe that goes to God's Outreach, which is a food bank in my local community. And that was nice. 9506. 1059 is my husband's Amazon Music. This is just what he's chose. I have no idea how that works. I use free stuff. He has his own thing. Um, 171 is Spectrum. I didn't realize this and maybe they added it because this is five dollars more than when I first signed up but I have Disney Plus now. <laughs> it's the commercial one, the low-end one, which is fine but we're not watching it that much but it's included in this so I activated it and now we have it again which I'm kind of excited about because I think they are having a Lego Star Wars Star Wars multiverse. So Lego cartoon, Star Wars characters, 
multiverse, like a totally different thing. So that's interesting. And that's in September. So you can look up um, on Disney. That commercial is really cute. I saw it on Instagram. Let's see. What else did we have? Six ninety nine. dollars Where's that at? There it is. Paramount Plus. We're still watching Knuckles. So I still have that. And then two sixty five dollars here. NutriSense. This is my sensor. Uh, that's two sensors a month um, for my glucose monitoring for my diabetes. Yes, I have to pay out of pocket because I am not insulin dependent. If I was insulin dependent, which I do not want to be, uh, insurance would cover it. But right now we're, we're able to afford it and I love using it. It has helped me greatly and it's helped my neuropathy symptoms, my hand and feet pain, just being able to track how my body reacts to certain foods, foods that I thought were healthy for me, my body doesn't like. I didn't know that, and that's what was causing some of the pain. So I am thrilled with that. So these are the bills that came out. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And we're good to go. I think I'll highlight as I go. I kind of like that. Put this away. And let's go ahead and total this up. Okay, so we had $548.64 in bills. Um, this is cable internet phone, the Spectrum. Um, so that's what was there. Anyway, that's that. Now we're gonna pay back the credit card. So I gotta know how much I put on the credit card total um, based on what I've been tracking and making sure what's on the credit card belongs on the credit card. You don't want random charges that don't belong on there. Any things that you may have forgot, you can go back and look, but track this and then get the total, make that payment on the credit card. So I'm going to start here. I've already got the 548.64 plus the 399.82. And all of this is being paid from the checking account to the credit card. Uh, plus 134, 70, plus $70.41, plus $202.85, and then um, plus $195.53. So we have um, I pay I'm paying back the credit card $1,551.95. So we're good. Uh, I definitely have that in the bank. And uh, because I have this $2,300.70, I know a lot of this, um, this unbudgeted can be covered with that amount and any overages with the restaurants coming up. Now with the restaurants, as I stay negative throughout the month, the total negative that'll be paid out of the buffer of the checking account happens when I close out the month. So um, uh, that'll be, I'll show you that at the end of the month. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. This is the weekly check-in, tracked all the things. Um, we set up week two and we are ready to go. This is a very conscious way of spending and keeping track of what you have spent and what you have available and what you don't have available. And if you overspend, where's that money coming from? That is important to think about. So that is what we have. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Have an amazing blessed day. Bye. I get so caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight cause I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down And it's not a lie That I die I can't hide
Yeah.